my 3D printed flexi model is not flexing like it's supposed to. Has this ever happened to you? If it has, I think I have a setting that will help you out. I really love the fact that in 3D printing, we can take a model and send it to the printer. And when it gets done, it comes off the build plate and it's connected and it can move. I just think that's absolutely magical. And I love when people see that happen for the first time. But getting these tolerances right is something that can be a little bit challenging. Now, the good news is that, for instance, when I first got started 3D printing, I was terrified of the slicer. I knew that there were a bunch of settings and I didn't know which ones were important and which weren't important. And the other thing were the polymers weren't as refined as they are these days. We really live in a time where PLA and PETG and all of the standard um, polymers we print with print really easily and well. But there are still times when you need to know what to do to take a model that might be a little too tight to move freely or a little too loose and falls apart and make a simple change. And so let's look at what we can do to change it. These are the catch all trays and they're by Geek Toy Box. And I really love these, but it's a great example of how you can make this tolerance change and really get sort of a different effect. So the goal of these little tra Ah, the printer's done. The goal of this is to have a nice little indentation. So for instance, I could take a pear and put it on here, or perhaps I have, that's a peach. I could put a pear on this. It's just an interesting little tray that has an indentation and it has this movement to it. Now, the first one I printed did not work that way. It actually is a little hung up. And so I wanted to be able to make a change in this, but this is a very delicate tolerance. This is a series of hexagons and they're connected at each side in a regular tiling. And so if the space between the pieces is too tight, it doesn't move. If the space between the pieces is too loose, you get a bunch of little pieces. So how do you get the right balance? Now, the good news is that Geek Toy Box designed these pretty well, and they have a really nice movement to them. But I wanted to see if I could get them to move a little more. And it's a great example. If you want to print this little one, these are free to download on printables.com. If you want to print a little one, and you can test the settings and see what I'm talking about. So it depends on which slicer you use. So if you use bamboo slicer or orca slicer, it is XY hole compensation or XY contour compensation. If you use Prusa slicer, it's XY size compensation. And if you use Cura, it's horizontal expansion. And so all of those are different ways of saying the exact same thing. Now, the good news is the way that the slicers work these days is you can hover over in almost all cases, each one of those settings, and you'll get this great pop up with a lot of information that will tell you what it's doing. So for instance, in Cura, it gives us some information about what it's doing with horizontal expansion. It says, depending on if you make it a negative or a positive value, it's making the entire object slimmer or fatter. Bamboo Studio also has some really nice information if you click on the setting and the other slicers all have information pretty much on what their settings do, which is great. And it's a really great way to learn about slicers. Now, so the question would be, how are we going to change this model to give it more flexibility? So I want to show you the difference between a model sliced as is and then sliced with a plus 0.1, and that's one tenth of a millimeter difference in the horizontal expansion. And it's it's interesting. It looks like it's the all the motion points are gone, and that's because one tenth of a millimeter makes a huge difference in this model. So let's slice it with negative 0.1 millimeter. And now it looks like it's got a lot more room to move. But this little model right here that is falling apart on my table is one tenth of a millimeter. So it's not much difference. And that's why you want to look at the sliced model and then you may have to print it. So it turns out it's negative 0.05. That's what I needed with my printer to have these models print and flex exactly the way I wanted them for my little peach and pear. So 
one setting. It has a bunch of different names. And in some cases, like Bamboo Slicer, Orca Slicer, and Prusa Slicer, they actually have two values. One is the contour compensation, and the other one is specific for holes, which is really great if you've got holes that are too tight or too loose. That's another um, setting just for that. But these are great settings to help get your models that are not moving, moving, or if they're moving too much and falling apart, keeping them from doing so. I started out being absolutely afraid of slicers because I didn't know how to configure them and work with them, but now I absolutely love them. So I'm gonna do more in this series, but I wanna know what you're interested in seeing and we'll see if we can get to it. In the meantime, go and print well and may your articulated models articulate easily. Mm -hmm.